Madam Speaker, I'm pleased to allow five minutes to the distinguished lady and colleague from the great state of Ohio, currently serving as chairwoman of the House Committee on Ethics and a member of the Distinguished Committee of Ways and Means, Ms. Jones. Gentlewoman from Ohio is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in strong support for H. Con Res 63. Today, through this resolution, we reiterate our support for our troops, the brave men and women who, even when they did not have proper equipment and resources, continue to serve and protect this country. Today, we pledge to offer them the same support they have so willingly given us throughout the conflict. To date, 3,100 soldiers who have given their lives in this war and over 20,000 have been injured. I often feel that we gloss over the numbers and forget that each one was an actual person. They were somebody's son, daughter, somebody's mother or father, somebody's brother or sister. They were real people, as real as 19-year-old Private Brandon Sloan and First Sergeant Robert Dowdy, who were the first soldiers from my congressional district to become casualties of this war. There may have been many others, and there have been many others, excuse me, including Sergeant Michael Wiggins, a graduate of Shaw High School in East Cleveland, killed on January 23rd. Or Charles King, a man described by family and friends as a highly decorated, hardworking soldier, died October 14th of injuries sustained when an improvised device detonated near his vehicle. And Samuel Bowen, who was affectionately called Smokey and always had a great smile on his face. He was killed when a rocket-propelled grenade exploded near his vehicle. At his funeral, Specialist Ronald Eaton, a soldier rescued by Bowen, said, without regard to himself, without regard for the injuries he had sustained, Sam grabbed me and pulled me to safety. All of these special story, all of these are special stories, but I will sh share a few more with you about Brandon and Robert Dowdy. Brandon Sloan was a special young man who exhibited a unique blend of personality and strength. A loving child, he played and enjoyed spending time with other children. Later became a big brother to his sister Brittany, with whom he shared a close relationship. He began his education in East Cleveland, remained in the district until his family moved to Euclid. While in East Cleveland, he developed a love for basketball and continued in various athletics pursuits. Uh, in 96, the family moved to Oakwood in the Bedford School District, and there Brandon became a Bearcat. He confessed his hope in Christ during his high school years and was baptized. Later, he pursued a new, uh, career in the military, where he subsequently gave his life. Master Sergeant Robert Dowdy was a native of Cleveland, a member of the 507th Maintenance Company. He was a loving son and devoted husband, a distance runner, placed second in a 10-kilometer run in El Paso. Why am I talking about all of these personal things, because somehow in the course of this discussion, we've taken it away from being personal about people. We stand here on the floor talking about a surge or giving life and saying we're not supporting these troops. These families want their babies to come home, and so do I. This past weekend, I spoke to the 112th Battalion of the Ohio National Guard. The battalion is the oldest and most decorated military organization in the state of Ohio, with lineage and honors dating back to and including World War I and World War II. These men and women have sacrificed greatly for this country, and now they're being asked to support the president's plan to send 20,000 more troops. I simply cannot support it. You've heard all the things I've said previously. This is not the way. We don't need to send any more Brandons or Robert Dowdy's or Michael King's or Charles Bo Bowen, Sam Bowen's over there to die. We pledge to take this country in a new direction without regard to the war in Iraq through greater accountability, oversight, and through stronger diplomatic and polit political initiatives. At the services for the uh, 25th Marine Regiment, a band of brothers, we lost some 12 young men from uh, Brook Park. And I said to them in my closing words, because these are the words I think these young men are saying to us, please celebrate my life, please have no regrets, we did not spend all the time we wanted, yet the time we had was well spent. We did not reach every rung of the ladder, yet we wrung all that we could from each height. We did not sing every song, yet we sang every note of the song we sang. We did not laugh all the time, but when we did, we laughed until we cried or until our stomachs hurt. And when we cried, we cried until our tears ran dry. But most of all, we loved, and our love is everlasting. If you look for us, listen for us. 
but most of all, live for us. We have fallen, but you can lift us up. Your love, your faith, your support, and your pride was what we needed then. God's love, grace, and mercy is what we need now. Lift these young men and women who have been killed in Iraq. Lift them up and say to the world, no surge, no more young people will be lost in Iraq. Bring our troops home.